Hello and welcome back to the optimization method class. This is the first course after the midterm exam. This week we are going to talk about quadratic programming. Now first let's see what degree means. Consider a nonlinear programming whose objective function is the sum of this type of terms. So this NLP uh, has an objective function that is the sum of this kind of terms. So one term means that it is a multiplication of your decision variables, but then you notice that each variable is raised to the power of something. For example, x1 to the power of k1, x2 to the power of k2, up to xn to the power of kn. Now, the degree of this term is k1 plus k2 up to kn. So let's see an example. If you have a term x1 squared times x2, the degree is 3. And then if you have term x1 times x2, the degree is 2. Because x1 to the power of 1, x2 to the power of 1. So what is quadratic programming problem? Quadratic programming problem is a nonlinear programming whose constraints are linear. So the constraints must be linear. The objective function, however, is the sum of the terms where you, uh, we have seen in the previous slide that a term means that the multiplication of decision variables and each variable is raised to the power of something. However, for a quadratic programming problem, there is a requirement that each term has two, one, or zero degree. So if you have a term that has, let's say, 3 degree or 4 degree, then it is not a quadratic programming problem. Okay, so the constraints must be linear. The objective function is the sum of the terms in which each term has 2, 1, or 0 degree. A real-world problem, as an example that may be modeled as a quadratic programming problem, is portfolio selection. Portfolio means a collection of all uh, all of your investments. Okay, so as an investor, usually this is what you want. You want the investment to give you a high expected return, but it also gives you a low risk. Low risk means that the variance is low. You know what to expect from that investment. If it gives you high return, then it is almost always high. Okay, so it, uh, that's what it means by low variance. However, if you look at the real world situation in the investments, usually if an investment offers a high expected return, usually it also involves a high risk, which means that uh, sometimes that investments give you a very high return, spectacular, but sometimes it also uh, gives you a big loss, for example. So the uh, variance is really high. Sometimes it's really good for you. Sometimes it's really bad. So that's what it's meant by um, variance. Okay. So what can an investor do? So probably this is what an investor can do. First, we set an acceptable expected return. So you said this is your uh, acceptable return. And then based on that return, you find the portfolio, you find the investments that fulfill that requirements, but then with minimum variance. So in other words, we try to minimize the variance of all the investments that um, satisfy the minimum expected return. Before going to the example of a quadratic programming problem in the portfolio selection, let's take a review on the um, expected value of sum of the sum of some random variables, the variance, covariance, and so on. So in this example, you are asked to find the covariance of two random variables. So in this example, it says that each summer in the Gotham City can be classified being either rainy summer or a sunny summer. And then the profits that is earned by 
The industries in Gotham City depends on the summer's weather. So if the summer is rainy, the hotel has a profit of minus a thousand. In other words, it has a loss. However, if the summer is rainy, the umbrella industry gets the profit of $4,500. And then uh, it is known that 20% of the summers are rainy and 80% are sunny. So H is a random variable, uh, which is defined as the profit earned by Gotham City Hotel during a summer. U is the profit earned by the umbrella store during a summer. It is a random variable because um, you don't know for sure whether the summer will be rainy or the summer will be sunny. Okay, so this question asks us to compute the covariance between H and U. H is the profit of the hotel, U is the profit of the umbrella store. Okay, so based on the formula, we see that first we need to obtain expected H and then expected U. So let's ignore that part and then just compute the expected profit for the hotel, expected profit for the umbrella store. So for the hotel, the profit can be minus 1000, can be plus 2000. Okay, and it depends whether the weather is rainy or sunny. The probability of rainy is 0.2, probability of sunny is 0.8. So multiply those probability with the profits and then you will get the expected value for the hotel. Using the same way, you will get the expected value for the umbrella store. Okay, we have got the expected value of H and expected value of U. Next, we need to compute this thing inside the curly bracket for both rainy condition with probability 20% and sunny condition with probability 80%. Okay, for the rainy condition, let's see, rainy H is minus 1000. Okay, so this H is minus 1,000, and then expected of H is uh, 1,400 that we obtain here. Okay, and then U for rainy is 4,500, minus expected U is 500. So we get this entire thing here for the rainy summer equals this. Do the same thing for the sunny summer, and we get this value. Now to obtain the expected value of these two uh, things, we multiply it with the probability 0.2 for the um, rainy summer, 0.8 for the um, sunny summer. So this is the result and this is the covariance of H and U. So because the value is negative, it indicates that when one industry does well, the other industry tends to do poorly because when it rains, the umbrella store has a high profit, but when it is sunny, it's the hotel who gets the high profit. Now let's go back to the portfolio optimization problem. So here in this example, we have um, three stocks that uh, we might invest in. And then the return of an investment is a random variable denoted by SI. So the return of um, stock I is a random variable. Um, so for example, if we know SI equals 0.12, it means that if you invest $1 today, uh, at the beginning of next year, it will be 1.12. So 12% 12 return in a year. And then this is a random variable, so SI is not exactly 0.12. It is a random variable, and the only information that we know is that the expected value of S1 is 0.14, expected value of S2 is 0.11, and expected value of point sorry, expected value of S3 is 0.10.
expected value means the average so the so the average return for each of the stock but then we also know the variance for each of the return of the stock we also know the covariance for s1 s2 s1 s3 and then s2 s3 what we need to do in this example is that we need to find the portfolio. In other words, how much we invest on stock one, how much we invest in stock two, and how much we invest in stock three, such that we will get an expected annual return at least 12% and minimize the variance. So here you can see that when you see the word at least, it means that this is a constraint so your solution is constrained to give you an expected annual return at least 12 percent and then this minimizes the variance is the objective so given this constraint you need to find the investment that minimize the risk or the variance as i've said before the decision in this problem is really how much you invest in each investment so you may define the decision variables as xj which means the amount of dollars invested in investment j j equals one two three and then for the constraint remember that this problem has a constraint on the expected annual return which means that um, whichever investment you choose and how much you choose to spend on each investment, the expected annual return should be at least 12%. Okay, so how can we um, calculate the expected annual return? Well, it may be calculated by um, computing the ratio between the return that we get divided by the investment, uh, the money that we invest. So the upper part of this equation is the money that we get as the return from the investment. And then the lower part, $1,000, is the total money that we put into the investment. If we plug in the values, you see that expected uh, return for S1 is 0.14. Expected return for stock 2 is 0.11. Expected return for stock 3 is 0.10. Now, how much money will we get from the return of the stocks? Well, it depends on how much money you invest in each investment. We do not know the value yet, but we have defined them as the decision variables. So that's why you see here, um, the return that we will get after a year is 0.14 times x1, 0.11 times x2, 0.10 times x3, divided by 1,000. And this must be greater than or equal to 12% or 0 0.12. So if we um, make everything into just um, one equation without the denominator, you will get this uh, inequality. So 0.14x1 plus 0.11x2 plus 0.10x3 greater than or equal to 120. Now, given the constraint that the expected annual return must be at least 12%, the objective is to minimize the variance of the annual return. So here you see that we do not have the word expected anymore. It says the variance of annual return. Okay, so the difference is that now uh, to compute the annual return, not the expected, the difference is that now we have S1, S2, and S3 without the notation of E or the expected of S1, S2, and S3. And then what we want to do is we want to minimize the variance of this thing. Okay, so we want to minimize the variance of this. We ignore the denominator divided by 1000 because as long as we minimize this, um, uh, we may divide it by any number and it's still the minimum variance, okay? So if you look at the review slide of the formulas that I showed earlier, you can see that when you have the sum of several random variables, you may compute 
the variance of the sum um, using this way. You compute the variance of each term separately and then plus two covariance of every two terms, so every pair of terms. And then you can also see that uh, when you have a constant times a random variable, the constants may go out of the parentheses, but then don't forget to put the square. Okay. Um, so same thing for the uh, covariance. You can also take, um, let's say, this one. You may take out x1, x3, and make it a multiplication. And then all these um, values of the covariance, variance, and everything has been provided in the problem. So finally, we may have this um, equation as our objective function. So here's the complete quadratic programming problem for the portfolio optimization. And then you can see that each term here only has uh, two degrees. OK, all terms here has two degrees. So this is a quadratic programming problem because um, the objective function is the sum of the terms. And then each term has at most two degrees. And then you can see that uh, both constraints are also linear. So this is a quadratic programming problem. So that's the end of this video. In the next one, I'm going to talk about uh, solving this quadratic programming problem. And that it requires some knowledge of the simplex alg algorithm and also two-phase simplex. So for those of you who um, need to refresh your uh, memory about simplex and two-phase simplex, I have a video about those topics and I will um, show the suggestions uh, at the end of this video. So thank you and see you on the next one.